Hello, everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Maybe we come to this time together um, with a whole lot of burdens falling on our shoulders and a whole lot of questions about what is expected of us, what is required of us as we go through this day. Well, this isn't unusual because as we uh, operate as human beings, there's always a whole lot that is expected of us. But is the purpose of life simply meeting the expectations that have been placed upon us? Maybe there is more to life than that. And so as we come together, I want us to ponder on the idea that life is all about being a participant. And what participant means um, can be something as, as simple as just being present, being connected, listening, and open to whatever seems to be coming our way. And so let's move into this time together first by clearing our minds of, of whatever may be cluttering our vision of the presence of God, whatever may be clouding our ability to to recognize that our God is with us right now in this moment, ready to guide us in the directions where we need to go. So I invite you to, to get comfortable, to sit straight, to take a breath, and then using Psalm 46, verse 10, to repeat after me. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be still. Be. Well, the Bible passage that I want to look at here in our time together, um, it comes from the beginning of the Gospel of Luke, and it is a story in which Mary is told that she is going to have a child, which is a pretty peculiar thing <laughs> uh, because Mary had never been with a man before. So how can this be? And yet, nonetheless, as the activity of God proceeded in an amazing way, what we find in Mary is an example of someone who was willing to participate. And so let's see if we might learn a thing or two from what we discover in this text. Uh, a conversation between the angel Gabriel and Mary. From Luke chapter 1. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. He'll be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive 
is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me according to your word. Then the angel left her. So I'd like to reflect on this. I've been moved recently by a series of devotions I've been reading about this very topic of life being participation in the things that are indeed going on in life. And to put it a little bit broader and greater and deeper, to be participating in what God is up to. For you see, in order to participate in what God is up to, one needs to realize that God is up to something. And oh boy, our God who is always near us is indeed active in our lives, active in the world around, not just in our churches, not just with religious and holy things, but everything <laughs> is touched by the activity of God. After all, in Acts 17, we learn from Paul, it is in him that we live and we move and we have our being. And so to be able to live as a person in a deeper way, to live within the freedom of who we were created to be is to live in such a way that we do participate in God's activity, that we are open and alert to what God is doing. We recognize it and then also feel that push, that pull, that calling of what we are to do next as well. And often these plans, these visions, they, they are not our creation. <laughs> they come to us. They appear to us. We have gone down this road for a long while, and, and now we've come to a fork in the road. And, 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 and whatever call that we are to make as we come to that fork, may it be that we are following the guidance of our Good Shepherd who will lead us to the kind of activity that we are to participate in. And at times, this participation is much more passive, much more quiet, much more, much more participating within the silence and the stillness of what is going on than it is to be drawn into the noise or become the ones who are making the noise. And this is where the story of the Annunciation of the angel Gabriel coming to Mary um, uh, becomes a part of this. Um, um, when we take a look at the nativity story, not, not the story that we typically look at this time of year, but, but one worth looking at and we allow ourselves to be taken in by the details of the story of, of the activity of those who are participating here in the early chapters of Luke. Um, Mary and Mary's relative, Elizabeth, Elizabeth's husband, Zechariah, and then of course, Joseph. Even consider the events of the nativity of Mary and Joseph, Mary now, with child well advanced and, and near her due date, making the journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem because of the requirements that have been handed down, uh, the need for a census to be taken and, and for Joseph to be in his hometown um, in order to be registered for this census. Um, when we look at these events, we discover people no different than you or me. And that's where we can really get off the right, you know, off course real quick when we take a look at these passages. Um, we are not to look at Mary and Joseph or any of these people as being some kind of untouchable icons that are held up on the high on the wall for us to be to to be venerating. Instead, these are human beings flesh and blood, no different from you and me, created in the image of God. 
And what we find in Joseph, what we find in Mary, are people who are willing to participate in what indeed God is up to. Famously, Mary says to the angel Gabriel, I am the Lord's servant. May it be done to me according to your will. She was willing to be a participant in a whole oh, what a way. She did participate. She gave birth to a son. And indeed, he was named Jesus. And we can only imagine. Well, those of you who are mothers don't need to imagine. <laughs> you, you know what the pain of childbirth is like. But do you know what it's like when there is no one to give any medical attention? To be in a place where, where animals would live, where their feed would be stored, to be among that kind of mess, that kind of chaos, to be miles and miles away from home. This is what she experienced, and, and she obeyed. She participated. She had a son. And then as it, of course, transpired, we have the shepherd's visit, or if you look at Matthew's gospel, the, the visit of the wise men. Um, there is nothing that is placed upon Mary that she actively needs to plan out to make sure that A, B, C, and D are covered. She was a mother and she loved her son and she raised her son and was present and active. And oh, how she was blessed. You know, I, I think that we got plenty of uh, church hymns that touch upon this subject, but maybe the best place, the best music <laughs> to express this idea of life as participation might come from the genre called country music. <laughs> and I don't know if you're a country music fan, but but uh, there are songs in country music. Uh, I think of John Michael Montgomery's uh, uh, Life's a Dance. Life's a dance, you learn as you go. <laughs> sometimes you lead, sometimes you follow, right? Or Leanne Womack, uh, I Hope You Dance. Um, sort of a, 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 a prayer, a wish for someone to participate in life and not just sit on the sidelines. Or, or even Garth Brooks, The Dance, in which Garth Brooks sings about the real blessing, though it may not always turn out well um, and we'll have plenty of moments of pain and sorrow. Um, life is a dance, but you participated in the dance. Um, and you always will have that dance. So maybe life is a dance, and you can only dance if you get on the dance floor. But what we learn from Mary and from many others, I mean, is Paul much different in uh, the New Testament, the one who understands that it is in God we live and move and have our being? He had a great plan for himself. He was a Pharisee well advanced and knowledgeable about the law. He was certain about how he was going to persecute the, those who were followers of Jesus and, and, and do what was expected of him until lo and behold, <laughs> things changed. And he knew he was called by God to participate in a new way, in a different way. Not his own doing, not his own plan, but dying of self. He was open to what God had in store and all oh, the places that God took him. God's ready to take us to places as well. But are we open to participate? Can the path that we are being led um, be so hidden from us or so frightening to us that we just refuse to go? I think that happens often. So may we learn from the Marys out there from scripture. May we learn from those who have allowed the burdens 
and expectations of those around them not dictate what is God's will for them. And also to understand that because God is the one who is active and God is the one who is moving us down this road, um, we don't carry the burden on our own shoulders. It's not up to you. It's not up to me in order for our plans and our projects to be successful. Instead, participating in what God is already up to we can become instruments of God's grace, of God's peace, of God's mercy in whatever it is. And so may you hold on to that freedom today. May you recognize that being a servant of the Lord is no burden, but truly is the pathway to truly being free. Mary thrived, not because she didn't suffer, not because she didn't experience pain, not just in childbirth, but even as Jesus grew older. Well, so too, we will experience that as well. But this dance that we are on with the Lord is quite a ride, and we don't want to miss it. So I think Jesus is calling us and asking and telling us, I hope we'll dance. <laughs> Therefore, we know that all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Let us pray. Dear Father, always near us, may your name be treasured and kept holy. Your kingdom come and your will be done in the world as it is in your heavens. Give us what we need for today. Forgive us our offenses as we forgive those who offend us in every way. Please do not lead us into temptation and protect us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Yesterday, today, tomorrow, and forever, you are the one in charge. Your faithful love is the energy that is active and is moving throughout this entire cosmos. How blessed we are to be able to participate in that, even just a little bit. Amen. Be at peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.